pleasant good morning to you, Trinidad and Tobago. And good day to you, nations of the earth. My name is Derek Mason. I'm your friendly intercessor, a.k.a. God's general. It's always a pleasure to be in your company. To bring to you the word of the Lord and to intercede on our behalf as a people, the people of the earth. This morning, I want to share with you what I believe the Lord has placed upon my heart. But I first have to give you a reminder. Because sometimes we forget Sometimes some of us don't even know that was said, that was spoken. So just in case you're new to what I'm about to play, I'm going to play it, then I would share my thoughts. But the Lord is still speaking. The Lord is still at work. He has never stopped working. Sometimes men think that they can escape the word of the Lord, the Lord watches over his word to perform it, every bit of it. His promises, his covenants, his judgments, he watches over it to accomplish it. So I want to play this prophetic clip for you and then I'll share my thoughts and I would allow you to understand what I was thinking and then what the Lord would have revealed to me. So let's listen. The words of the Lord again. That is towards us, the nations of the earth. It would have been told to us that in the midst of the pandemic there would be a literal race for arms as nations leaders go to and fro to fulfill their end time agenda. Now here it is. Open your eyes and see just as I have spoken so it is. This generation is about to witness an escalation of wars like they have never seen it before. When nations fight against nations like never before, restrictions on traveling would be enforced, not because of a flu pandemic, but it is because of an escalation of wars between nations. It would be to the point where it become a high risk to even fly in a commercial airline. In some instance, there would be escorts of commercial airlines by fighter jets to get to their destinations. Church, do what you must. Look up, it is only the beginning of sorrows that is coming upon the earth. Go forth and reap the harvest of the souls of men. Remember, I have sent you as sheep among wolves. Go forth, I am with you to the end as I have promised. As nations leaders, give their allegiance one to another. You know where your allegiance lies. This world war is not a surface war between flesh and blood, but against the kingdom of darkness that stirs up the hearts of mankind to do evil and rebel against me, the living God. I have hissed and have called forth the nations into battle 
so that I can correct them. Some I will embarrass and cause to turn back to their land with but a few troops and others like sheep to the slaughter because of rebellion towards me, says the Lord. Hear, O nations, hear, O nations, I am still God. I still rule in the kingdoms and in the affairs of men. Hardship, 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 hardship because of wars is coming. Turn to me, you nations, turn to me and live. Why would you die the death of the uncircumcised in heart? Turn to me and live. Hear my cry from one end of the earth to another. Turn, turn, turn and live. Why should you die the death of the uncircumcised in heart? By the cruelty of men, they will pollute their own waters. As they're crude, washed upon their shores and they're running to and fro, to sustain their trade agreements. There's a generation that do not know me, and there's a generation that has known me but have fallen asleep. Wake up and know that I am God, maker of all things, and I still live to show righteousness and loving kindness throughout the ends of the earth towards those whose hearts are set towards me. I am God, I change not. In my counsel, there is safety. If a man finds me, he finds safety. If a man finds me, he finds his sustenance. Seek me while I may be found. Learn of me and live. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. Your sins are heavy and they are wearisome and you pine away in them. Exchange, take my yoke, give me your sin. Repentance for forgiveness, mercy in judgment, life for death, exchange says the Lord. These be the words of the Lord, nations of the earth. Yes, these be the words of the Lord, that which has been spoken a couple months ago, building up from that which has been spoken at the beginning, at the inception of the pandemic. early 2020 now the reason why I I played this because personally when I see what's happening around me and I said me because times you you see things on a personal level, but it's happening around us, all across the globe, in some nations more than the other. We're seeing just as the Lord had spoken, and just as it is written, that hardship is upon us, some because of wars, and wars that causes famine, the actions of men that causes climate change and 
causes drought in some areas. We are seeing things that are escalating. And as for some of us, we become very concerned. And I am in that category where I have become very concerned for the souls of men and I I recall the prophetic word that the Lord had given saying that he has a controversy with the nation's leaders and he would answer them for himself and in this same prophetic word that was played just a while ago it is said that men would go to and fro running here and there for arms and we are seeing it right before our eyes today. Sometimes I am placed in that position like you are at times where when the Lord speaks, you wonder how this would play out or when this would play out but you just know within your spirit that this is what God is saying and you have to trust his word everything must be done and received by faith trust in what he's saying and trust him even in the midst of what is happening and where, where I found myself was thinking and considering of how some nations' leaders, not all, some nations' leaders are given over to real demonic powers and principalities are really governing their lives and they are really being used by demonic powers in these end times and I, I watch and I observe these things and I ponder these things and you would ask yourself if some nation's leaders really have a heart or, or are they getting conviction and when you look deeper, you would see where they have become the enemy's target because he, he would put emphasis on certain areas in society among humanity so that he can develop and establish strongholds so that he can fulfill his end time agenda. And he have found himself seated well in the hearts of some of these men and women and you're seeing things unfolding right before our eyes but we the church as is said in the prophetic word we should know where our allegiance lies our allegiance must be to the Lamb, to the one who called us, the one who redeemed us, the one who is able to keep us in the midst of all that is happening upon planet Earth because he promises that he would make all things new. And one of the things that the Lord had ministered to me, even this morning, in connection with what I'm sharing now 
he said in the midst of all this these wars and famine and drought and hardship and economic downturn and all these things he brought to my attention psalm 27 psalm 27 and from verse 5 it says for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion and i will stress on that for in the time of trouble he would hide me in his pavilion in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me he shall set me up upon a rock now when i pondered upon that I, I studied what a pavilion really is and what a pavilion is used for. For some of us who are familiar with pavilion, you would find pavilion mostly in playgrounds, stadiums, complex. And a pavilion is really a place where one can sit in and taking a game or one can be refreshed and it's a place where even the players on the field can just take a break and refresh and go again but mostly pavilion is that place where it's it has be like a seated area above change rooms and restrooms and these things the way that it's constructed so it's like a refreshing place and when i pondered upon this verse here where it says for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion i said wow you know why you know why I, I really became amazed because that's where you sit to watch either one person going against the other sometimes people sit in pavilions to watch different types of sports like rock, um, rugby, wrestling, football, tennis, and you you watch and you 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 you, you have your favorite um, sports person or sports team, and you're in the pavilion there, and you're cheering on for who. You're back in. And in that moment, sometimes people have a drink in their hand, a little juice, a little Pepsi, something, and popcorn or a burger. Some people in care to have anything. They are just there to support their team or their favorite sport fan. But they're in the pavilion. And they are backing who they are supporting and they want to win. Their favorite. And I guess you have the idea by now. And the clue by now what I'm conveying here. If the Lord said through the psalmist David for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion it shouldn't be hard to see 
who are the game players while you are in the pavilion? Is the Lord against the enemy? And when you are in that pavilion, there's only one person you can find yourself cheering for and saying, go on, have your way. Move. I know it's trouble sometimes, but I'm in your pavilion, back in your every word that you have spoken. You said that you would provide for me. I believe that so I would make noise. I will cheer on. In the time of trouble, you said you would defend me. Therefore, I would lift my voice and my praises. When you sit in a pavilion, only, only few sports like cricket and golf and and pool and them kind of thing, you see people remaining kind of quiet and, you know, but still they just get a little clap and whatever. But real action sports, it has got noise, especially things like football or, 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 or the Super Bowl, American football, basketball and these things. And in God's pavilion, in spite of trouble, he is the main player on the field that is dealing with the enemy. And that is what caught my attention when I became concerned for what is happening upon our earth today and how evil men, because of the enemy that has gripped their hearts to do evil things upon our earth. And you, you wonder where is the God in them? The enemy have been having a field day in the lives of humanity. But those of us who trust in the Lord and his promises, when we see these troubles, Jesus said, look up. Because our redemption draw nigh. That pavilion is a place where you are hidden in him. That secret place is not a literal pavilion. But this is how the psalmist describe it. It's that place where the Lord would cause you to see. Oftentimes a pavilion, it, it sort of like start from a position where you can see. And it just ascends going up. And the higher you go, you get a sort of like overall view of the entire field, the entire playground. And the higher you go with the Lord, you, the more you would see what is happening, what the Lord is doing. As you sit in this pavilion in the time of trouble, in this day and age that we are living in, the Lord says, in spite of what was spoken, in spite of what is to come, he's given us that place of comfort in him. It's his pavilion. It's his secret place, the secret of his tabernacle. It's the place where he would hide you. He would set your feet upon a rock, a firm place where you can see the reward of the wicked. And mind you me, don't be become warped in your mind as to 
think from women that human beings are your enemy. I always stress on this. They may be captivated and influenced by who is the real enemy. But on this play field, there's one champion. It may look as though goals in grand score. But trust me, this, this game already won. If you are not in his pavilion, get in his pavilion. If you are not seeing what is going on, maybe you are on the outside of the stadium. Get in the game. But be in the pavilion where you can see what the Lord is doing. The Lord says in Psalm 27, verse 5, For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And here it goes in verse 6. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. <laughs> yeah, no, you know those, you know those, in those in games, you, you would have supporters for one team and supporters for the other team. And sometimes one person with, might be taunting, one supporter might be taunting another supporter, saying, we go beat all here today, licks, you know, and you're taunting one another. And we gain all the three goals or nil, and you're taunting one another. And when goals are scored upon one team, one team must be happy, and the other team must be vexed. And you would get little taunting. You would get, like, you would see more goals go score. All the way and get three here today. And the other team might say, watch and you'll see we will come back. We could draw them, we could score our next one. You'll get different tauntings. And it's similar in this game. And when I say game, I mean a game game. And this is real life. But it's just a paraphrase. Verse 6 says, And now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies. Round about. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. In that pavilion, you cannot remain silent. Your head would be lifted above the circumstance. Of what the enemy brings. Because you are cheering on. For the champion of champions. In the midst of all that is happening people. When you are hidden in God's pavilion. You see the outcome. Jesus have already won. In the midst of what we are experiencing, in the midst of this troubled world, he is our champion. Don't come off of the pavilion or out of the pavilion or out of a secret place. Get your popcorn. Get your cokes. The refreshments and watch carefully watch and pray praise your God worship back him on because he's faithful to perform every word 
that he says he would perform. And these be my thoughts as I would have pondered upon the word of the Lord that I saw coming to pass and things that are happening in our world today. And I studied how the enemy have taken a hold on, on men and causing them to do wickedly upon the earth. And times are just unfolding before us. When I see these things, the Lord put this in my heart. That he would hide us in his pavilion. Before I pray, let me just say this part also. In relation, Revelation chapter 6 and from verse 3, I read from verse 3. It says, when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword, that's war again, trouble sometimes, that the book of Revelation is speaking of here. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see, and behold, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balance in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny. And we are experiencing that today. Most of our wheat comes from places like Ukraine and these places. And we are having challenges for that. Measure of wheat for a penny. And, in, and I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny and a measure of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. There's a, a, a real battle over oil today and gas and these things we're seeing it in our age people trouble sometimes i hear but the lord saying is saying in the midst of trouble i would hide you in my pavilion if you want to stay outside the stadium that's you but allow the lord to hide you in his pavilion it says when he had opened the fourth seal i heard the voice of the fourth beast say come and see and look and beheld a, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. People will die in all of this. We will die, people. One day, if Jesus tarry, we'll die. If the rapture comes before, we go to meet him, but it's appointed unto us once to die. It says, this, this second horse was dead, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto him over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger. We're experiencing that today. It's on the escalation. And with death and with the beast of the earth. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony they held, that saints, that's believers. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, Lord, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And it was as though that was my cry also. That's a similar feeling. It's like, what's going on with these wicked people? They're allowing the enemy to just put wickedness in their hearts. And look what they're doing. They're causing wars. And they continue to do things unnecessary. And it says, white robes were given unto every one of them. 
and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. White robes were given unto them. You must have your team support clothing. God's support clothing is the righteousness that he gave unto saints. So let us live right, stay in his righteousness, and allow him to hide us in his pavilion. So shall we be saved even from our enemies in these end times.